So let us see what is, how is cloud computing happening. So while if we were to look at this slide on the screen, how does the cloud come to happen? So at, at the first stage, there is consolidation that needs to be that needs to be done. So this consolidation can be managed better or can be handled through virtualization. Virtualization would mean automation again and metering and chargeback. Metering and chargeback is, is, is are new words that are appearing in the IT where chargeback is, is something you know we are all familiar with cashback but chargeback is, is new to us. And as part of automated processes metering and chargeback is going to make a strong entry into the IT infrastructure. And the day we can start self-provisioning of the cloud, we have a complete in installation of cloud happening, be it inside the organization or be it outside the organization. And as we progress through the presentation, we will also see <clears throat> that what are the various models of the cloud. You know, today we are all, all believing that the cloud exists outside. You know, Amazon or Azure, they, they make us appear as if the cloud is outside, but the, the cloud can coexist outside within the organization and live happily together. That is what we are headed for. So if I were to look at this slide once again, the various stages of migration to the cloud of any organization, whether it is planned or whether it has happened, goes through a, goes through a cycle of consolidation followed by virtualization then a section of automation comes in and then provisioning of the cloud comes in. So if it's a data center who is offering uh, services on the cloud, he has to be on the right hand side of the, of the graph offering self-provisioning, metering chargeback, mobility and virtualization layers to the customer. So that is how the cloud will make its appearance felt to the various sections of the users. And that is the way we have seen it happen also. Today you can buy Amazon by the R. So what is what are we doing? We are enabling self-provisioning and we are allowing metering and chargeback so that when the server is being shut down, there is no filling that is happening. What is the cloud? The photograph that you see on the screen is of a very famous man. I'm sure all of you are aware of Jeff Bezos, who called you know cloud as a muck. It, is, it attracts infrastructure complexities of server applications data and heterogeneous platforms. Famous words from a very famous man. However, they need to be simplified or be explainable to a technical audience. <clears throat> so it's a model for enabling on-demand network access. While I've been talking to a couple of experts, somebody has even mentioned, you know, emergence of a stored network. We will, we will talk about it some other day, but yes, on-demand network access is the key. So when you are dialing into, when you are logging into Hotmail or your Google account, you are accessing somebody's network, which is available to you 24 by 7, which is ever expanding, which is very elastic in nature, which presumably never goes down. It is very rare that Hotmail or a Yahoo or a Google would throw back a message to you saying that the servers are down, please try it. It has happened, yes. But look at the percentage of these messages occurring. Your data not being retrievable. In fact, we are all fighting, you know, that my data is being replicated at so many places I don't know when I delete. Does it actually get deleted from the rest of the world or is it available everywhere? And rapid provisioning is another key that cloud computing demands. And what does it deliver? It delivers availability. It consists of five essential characteristics that I will be talking about. It consists of three service models and four deployment models. As we progress, I will be sharing what these five, three and four deployment models are. Most of us are familiar with these terms. I am make, making an attempt to make us more in-depth knowledge onto all of these. What are the five essential cloud characteristics? 
as we've already mentioned, on demand and self-service. Availability, high availability and being available to me when I need it. So whether it be the application, the be the infrastructure or be the platform, we are always worried about, you know, on demand is the term that is required. So as they say, the Gen Y today is impatient. On demand is just an extension of that. Network devices have, the prices have gone down. Internet has become a commodity. That is what all sales people keep telling me. Although it is still unaffordable and uh, some of the service providers have been raising prices also. But broad network access is the order of the day. Being connected is, is what is required. Today we have cell phones that are always online. Today we have laptops, of course. You know. Today when you are attempting a survey and it says, are you, are you on the net eight hours? And if you say no, I think you are out of sync. However, the term resource pooling needs more explanation, which is a direct result of virtualization that has, that has come off age and it delivers resource pooling by terms of mixing of server CPUs, availability of greater RAM, sharing of resources, and you know, thin provisioning of disk. So you could be looking at half a GB of space expandable to 500 GB of space on a, on a single volume or multiple volumes within a data center. Of course, we have cases where your data could be spanned across continents. The word location independence has lost its meaning because the IT, IP address is ubiquitous. So you are the number that the 12 digit number that each IP device gives makes us location independence. But yes, it's an essential characteristic of the cloud. I would be wrong if I say that scalability is not required on the cloud. Today, all applications that are being designed, all hardware that is being designed, is, is for a load that is unknown. While you may be using your SAP implementation and you know what your load is, but at times, even that infrastructure that you have becomes insufficient because of so many constraints that can happen. So everybody talks of rapid elasticity. Service has never been measurable. However, the cloud demands that the service be measured. That is where the concepts of metering, chargeback, SLAs have come into being. And, and you know, they are here to stay. It is not that they will disappear tomorrow. So five essential cloud characteristics would be as, as we have here. On-demand cell service, broad or close to unlimited network access, Pooling of resources, coagulation of resources, having the ability to access more than what you have provisioned, or you feel that you, you know, having access to more resources than required. Irrespective of your geographical location, you should be able to access. Of course, this is subject to the availability of network there. And whenever you are demanding more resources, it is not that you have to go with an application to the CIO that I need additional hard disk space. This should happen on the fly and either you should be built for it or when you are not using the space that you are asking for, you should be given a charge back for this. Service measurability of course is important. So these are essentially the five very cloud characteristics that we expect from a cloud service provider or an in-house cloud. Having, having talked about these, what are the three cloud service models? 